How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for IM, surge, gastrointestinal in general. If you're studying for step one, definitely fair game. Okay, I'd say challenging question for step one, uh, for step two, past level. Okay, not going to waste our fucking time. A lot of juicy details regarding these answer choices here. I'll stay consolidated, tell you just the high yield points. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I'll start the clip. So 49-year-old woman, one month history of icterus, scleral icterus. Vitals are within normal limits. She had a cholecystectomy performed uh, 24 years ago at the age of 25. Her pancreatic enzymes are normal. Her total bill of ribbon and serum ALP are increased. She's a non-smoker and has had no way, no recent weight loss. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen as patient. So let's just whip to the answer choices here. Choice A, bile duct leak, wrong fucking answer. This, weirdly enough, uh, tends to be an incipient, a recent diagnosis that's been floating around on uh, primarily QBank, but I believe it's shown up once or twice on some of the NBME content for TCK. Sometimes you might see it as an incorrect answer. All you need to know is if a patient has had a cholecystectomy performed uh, within the past week and then now has fever, jaundice and abdominal pain okay and the jaundice being an increase in direct bilirubin that's going to be bile duct leak okay weird slash obscure diagnosis to a degree point is wrong fucking answer choice b cholecystoduodenal fistula also an obscure sign diagnosis wrong answer i've seen this on the nbme exams you need to know that this can be the answer if we have gallstone ileus Okay, so this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a big fucking paragraph, and you're going to pretty much have no idea what's going on. In the last line, they're going to tell you that there is air visualized in the biliary tree slash in the liver. And you say, that's really fucking weird. I don't know what that means. Answer is gallstone ileus. Okay, so for whatever fucking reason, patients who have long-standing uh, history of stones can, some of them can develop a fistula between the gallbladder and the small bowel. And that can somehow lead to a stone entering the small bowel, causing an obstruction. Okay, So air in the biliary tree slash in the liver, that's gallstone ileus. The answer can show up as gallstone ileus. And it can also show up as cholecystoduodenal fistula. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Should I see cholecystoduodenal Very generic term. It's wrong answer. This means a stone in the biliary tree, okay? In contrast, cholothiasis is a stone in the gallbladder. So cholodocolithiasis, there's a lot to discuss here, mainly because you can have a stone that is higher up in the tree, does not cause obstruction of the uh, hepatopancreatic ampulla, okay? So for example, if you have a high bilirubin, direct bilirubin, high ALP, you want to think of stones, of course, entering the biliary tree in the common bile duct causing obstruction. If the stone descends further, and as I just fucking said, blocking off the pancreatic hepatic ampulla or hepatopancreatic ampulla, then we can get an elevation of pancreatic enzymes. They're normal here. That would be called gallstone pancreatitis. Okay, so you need to be aware of gallstone pancreatitis, that, that term. But also, the answer could just be written more generally as cholodocolithiasis. Okay, so when we suspect a stone, whether it's in the gallbladder or biliary tree, we're going to do an ultrasound first, okay? Oftentimes, you're not, the ultrasound will be negative for cholodocolithiasis, and then the next best step on 2CK is going to be ERCP. I've never seen MRCP as a correct answer. I've only seen it as a wrong answer. ERCP is classically going to be the answer they want, okay? And they'll say in the vignette an ultrasound was performed. It can't be cholodocolithiasis here because the patient has uh, no gallbladder as of 24 years ago. Okay, that's probably the most salient point that I should have mentioned earlier, but uh, that's how you know it's not a stone. Okay, you say, well, why couldn't it be a stone in the biliary tree? Patient has no fucking gallbladder. Okay, so if they want cholodocolithiasis, oftentimes what they'll do is say the patient had a cholecystectomy performed a week ago and intraoperative cholangiography was not performed. So sometimes patients can have a stone that was retained in the proximal cystic duct 
and it descends into the common bile duct following the procedure, and we get obstruction, okay? Don't confuse that with bile duct leak, as I said before, which would be cholecystectomy performed a week ago, and now you have fever, jaundice, and abdominal pain, okay? So it can't be a stone here, because the patient doesn't have a fucking gallbladder. Choice D, cholothiasis, wrong answer, same deal. The patient doesn't have a gallbladder. Clearly, you're not going to have a stone here. This would just, you would not have increased ALP or bilirubin in this case, probably 14 out of 15 times. There's one fucking question on one of the new 2CK forms where there is increased ALP and bilirubin in a cholothiasis. Uh, that's the answer. Very fucking weird. Okay. Uh, I've seen the question. I've felt that there's a bit of an erratum there. Um, we can hypothesize that a stone could descend, cause a concurrent cholodocolithiasis, but 14 out of 15 times, you're not going to have increased ALP or bilirubin and cholothiasis. Ultrasound to diagnose. If you have cholothiasis plus fever, we now call that cholecystitis. You're still going to do an ultrasound to diagnose. If the ultrasound is negative, you're going to do a HIDA scan to diagnose cholecystitis. Okay? Wrong fucking answer. Malignancy is the correct answer. Diagnosis is pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Okay, so head of pancreas cancer can impinge on the common bile duct, ultra fucking high yield. Okay, you're going to do a CT of the abdomen to diagnose. Important answer on 2CK. This can cause CA sign. This can be painless jaundice in a patient who's afebrile, and you can have a palpable or a visible gallbladder. Okay, gallbladder can present as a bulge in the epigastrium, or it can just be a palpable gallbladder that's painless in an afebrile patient who's jaundice, as I said. Okay, so uh, I've seen one question where they said that there was abdominal pain, but I'm just telling you, if you were to look up Corvoisier sign, which is very textbook for pancreatic cancer, they don't mention pain. Okay, but NBME will do its thing. I've seen one question where it's pain. If you get obs uh, obscure findings that you don't expect, as I just said, it tends to be the case where you can eliminate the others. And you're like, well, that makes no fucking sense. That makes no fucking sense. And you're ultimately left with malignancy as the best answer. Patient's not a smoker. Okay, no recent weight loss. It's not mandatory, but we've eliminated to get there. We know it's not a stone. Patient doesn't have a fucking gallbladder. How could it be a stone? So we've eliminated stones as a possibility. We've eliminated bile duct leak and a fistula. Now, sphincter rotis dysfunction, you say, well, why is that wrong? It's because our pancreatic enzymes are normal. So this comes down to malignancy or sphincter rhodi dysfunction, but we have normal pancreatic enzymes. So essentially, if a patient has a presentation that sounds like gallstone pancreatitis, okay, so high ALP, high bilirubin, pancreatic enzymes are elevated, that sounds like a gallstone, okay, uh, blocking off the hepatopancreatic ampulla. But if there's no fucking gallbladder, you're not going to have a stone. So that could be sphincter rhodi dysfunction. I've never seen this as a correct answer on NBME. I've only seen it as an incorrect answer, but it shows up quite a bit as a wrong answer slash distractor. That's why I'm mentioning it here. So when could it be the answer? Okay, so when you have elevated pancreatic enzymes, it sounds like gallstone pancreatitis, but you don't have a gallbladder. So we're left with malignancy here. Once again, Corvoid CA sign. Uh, you need to know impingement of head of pancreas cancer on the common bile duct causes a painless jaundice and the patient's going to be afebrile and one question as I said in the NBME abdominal pain but it's not typical you're going to do CT to diagnose pancreatic cancer you know the deal to make more content if you like my stuff subscribe my channel I appreciate your time that's it